In today's video, we're going to discuss the best Bind and Fly 7 inch long range FPV drone that you can buy. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Justin Davis of Drone Camps RC with over 10 years of FPV flying experience. You found one of the original drone channels on YouTube. And today we're going to discuss seven inch FPV long range bind and fly quad that you can get. I've tested all the ones on the bench here today. We have four of them that have been released to me in 2023. And I'm going to talk about my flying experiences for each one of these and the characteristics of each one and which one I like best in a rating from one through three and one for honorable mention but before we do that let's tell you how you can join the drone camps community and for free connect with others and learn how to fly if you want to join the drone camps fpv community it's super easy and now we have so many different ways that you can get involved make friends and learn how to fly it's a lot of fun in our community and it's really growing a lot in the past couple months the first thing you can do is become a patreon on the channel if you do that you get direct access to me send me a message if you need some tech support and i will help you out no matter what the subject is for fpv drones the next thing you can do if you don't want to jump into patreon i understand it's a dedication to that if you like what i make and you want to support the content you can do a new option in the link description below it's called buy me a coffee it's simply buy me a coffee for around two dollars um, it sends me two dollars and that's super sweet and that's a, just a way to say thanks you can also leave a message on my buy me a coffee page that would be super awesome i know a lot of other youtubers out there have that option the next thing that we did was we set up a discord channel you guys have been asking for that so if you ask you shall receive and we have a few different channels in there as well we have a main channel we have a buy sell trade we have a tech support channel with at joy f tech fpv in there helping people as a moderator on the daily for tech support and myself and others are helping the community so it's not just me in there it's tons of guys in there giving help to others in the community giving back to the new guys coming in so on this channel we've always fostered the new guys the next place you can find information is on dronecamps.com where i have written tons of articles almost new articles daily and that it's really becoming an FPV repository for people that want to find out new information. It's all brand new information right there as far as ELRS, setting up a RadioMaster TX16S and all kinds of cool stuff there, as well as a brand new Drone Camps forum. There's so much new stuff, guys. It's super awesome. And finally, you can check out the Quad Shop. And the Quad Shop is simply a place where if I have a quad that I reviewed, I want to sell it to you. You can get it for up to 50% off the retail price price it was probably flown a handful of times and it's a great deal for you all right let's get into it let's go ahead and have the seven inch showdown of the seven inches that i have available so far this year number three is the brand new colas 7 which is a foldable seven inch drone that you can put a camera on and you can fly long range it also has the largest gps of any of them on the bench right here and let's go ahead and jump into why this one is number three our number three pick is the Axis Flying Cola 7. This is a foldable seven inch drone that you have several options with. You can get the analog version, which is one of the cheapest ones out of this pack. It's around $400 to the analog version. You can also add TBS Crossfire on this one or ELRS. You can even bind up to your DJI radio. If you're using the older air unit, which I have, you can use the black DJI transmitter. Uh, I don't really recommend that, but it has a decent range on there. I have tested the RX inside this air unit it, but I don't recommend using the DJI FPV controller, which is the gray one with the O3 unit. And speaking of the O3 unit, they just released an O3 version of the Cola 7. And that's pretty sweet because now you could take the GoPro Hero off or the One R that I have here. I would not fly with um, an action camera on a seven inch. In my opinion, if you're going to go out there and enjoy some range flying, the best setup would be to just not have it on there unless you're doing cinema videos or you're doing canyon fly throughs and you require a GoPro because honestly it turns the performance of the quad way up 
if you take this extra amount of weight off the quad. I feel it as an experienced pilot. You may not, but I can feel the motor sag when I'm flying and I'm coming up over a canyon ridge and I just need an extra amount of throttle to get that extra weight over top of a cliff. So um, that's totally up to you. But this quad also has some of the largest, beastiest motors in here uh, in this video. We have the C287s here from Axis Flying and those will give you plenty of power for lifting a GoPro, uh, even a large battery is something like a 4S 5000 pack. You can fly 4S and 6S on this quad and you can fly the full SIN 6S 4000 milliamp pack which is going to get you 15 to 18 minutes flight time if you want a little bit longer flight time on the Cola 7. Uh, but this quad is really for guys who need something that can be um, broken down and that is foldable. Um, it is quite hard to get the lever to actually let the arms go um, and it takes me a while to to be able to to get my arms to, to fold um, and once they lock into place they're really not going to come um, back out and you will have to use the folding props if you really want to make this happen um, because the props do kind of run into the, the quads frame when you're folding them here so um, you should hear a little tiny lock when it comes back into place and you can press this lever in the very back and make this quad completely transportable. But this one, again, this one's for guys who want to um, use a seven inch while they're traveling. If you're going on a trip overseas, this will be the one to get for the best portable option. Now, as far as tune goes, I would say that this one's, uh, I would say it's number three in the tune as well because I did see some vibrations in this when I was recording with my One RS. The One RS has terrible EIS uh, stabilization on here and it really shows all the quads vibrations. Um, but it does have the most camera protection up front, which I love that they have a standoff here protecting that too, carbon sidewall plates, and they're using T700 carbon fiber on here. So um, very nice, high quality, very well polished carbon fiber on this quad. And if you're gonna run this one long range, I would definitely recommend using TBS Crossfire. Uh, I only use TBS Crossfire on my seven inch. I, I'm not into ELRS yet for long range. Uh, I'm still kind of testing out ELRS and there still seems to be some bugs. But if you want my favorite propeller on there as well, guys, my, my HQ, Definitely my favorite, and I'll put some links down below for some 7-inch props. If you guys want to have the best video, use the Tri-Blade prop. We tested these, and this was the best prop that I tested for the smoothest video. Now let's move on to number two out of three is the Recon FPV Recon 7 Pro. This is a long range drone with GPS on there as well. And what I love about this one is that they also make an analog version for around $400. They make an O3 version for around 550 with O3 on board. I would get the O3 version if you can go that much on a quad. This is going to be one of your favorite quads of all time. Um, this is great because you have also three choices of receiver on this quad. You have the Crossfire Diversity, which I have on here. You can see the antenna up front and the antenna in the back. That's the one that I recommend if you don't want to have a fail safe. Um, but the, one of the main rules of flying long range, guys, I keep telling people this over and over, is that as you fly out, you go higher as you go. Um, most people fly out two, three, four miles, and then they get down on the deck and they fail safe. If you don't have your GPS set up correctly and uh, your, your, your throttle fallback channel is not set up correctly as well, boom, you're on the ground. So uh, if you don't want to go hiking, fly higher as you go. Now this quad, it is a dead cat version again, and this one's a little bit different design than the other ones that we've um, shown on the channel. This one has two crossbars and it is in the dead cat fashion, which I love. It has two antennas in the back. These are both left-hand circular polarized antennas. It has that sort of truck body classic long bed on here. I can get up to a 5,000 pack on here, but the 5,000 pack just kind of pushes on these antennas back here. Uh, so if you're gonna run something like a 6S 4000, you might, if you're not running a GoPro up front, you'll be fine. Uh, but otherwise, you'll be kind of pushing there. And I say long body, but it's, it has actually a little bit shorter than something like the Chimera 7 or even the Cola 7 uh, has a little bit longer, what we call truck bed right there. But I like the fact that we have diversity antennas on here. It has a nice GoPro mount. 
And again, if you're only flying the O3, take the GoPro off and you're gonna have a much better feeling quad. It won't feel quite as heavy. Um, this one to me is number two because of the way it flew out in the fields. I feel like this one has a nice float to it and it, it feels nice and light with the power system on board. Um, this one also comes with the full version of the, you can get the, the O3 on board, you can get the air unit, um, and I believe they might have the walk snail version as well. But this one was also designed by one of my favorite dudes out there, Dave CFPV. Um, you can see some of his other designs. He's been working with uh, HGLRC and, and Recon FPV for quite some time, and his designs kind of stand out in the pack. Um, if you see a Dave's, Dave's designs, that's one of the reasons that Recon FPV's quad looks so freaking cool. Uh, but the wheelbase on this one, we're looking at 324 millimeters. And this one is not the T700 carbon fiber like the Cola 7 was. So you can also run a 4S LiPo on this one, like I mentioned before. You can run the 6S. This one is probably going to get you on these motors and this setup. These are 1250 kV. Um, so this is probably going to get you in the 18 minute flight time. You can run a Lion pack down past 3 volt per cell. So if you're flying long range, also, guys, like big tip put per cell voltage on the screen and once you dip down to about three volt per cell you want to kind of be back to your landing area because um, lions will dramatically drop and go to zero once they get down to about 2.6 volt that's pretty much the kill spot for any lion pack so uh, be very careful there but once you get even down to like 2.6 on a lion once you land your resting voltage on this pack will actually go up. It'll increase. You won't actually be sitting at 2.6. When you see 2.6 on the screen while you're flying, it's gonna go up when you land. So uh, we call that resting voltage. But I don't recommend going down to 2.6 because I've done it before and these packs get mega, mega hot um, and they feel like they're about to explode at that point. But this one had a really nice flight characteristic. I think the tune is probably number two out of three as well. It has a better tune than the Cola 7 from Axis flying and and again i recommend flying those hq props these are the smoothest for the best experience and this one feels a, a lot has a lot more flow and glide to it than the colas did the colas to me feels a little heavier whereas this one has a little bit larger wingspan guys were talking about trying to put seven and a half inch props on here and uh, i don't think there's quite enough room on here but somebody could put a comment down in this video description uh, in the comments and let me know if it does actually can run seven and a half inch props on there uh, but let's go ahead and talk about number one right now because number one is going to be the big daddy of this video and I think for the rest of 2023, unless the GEP RC crocodile comes in and smashes it, uh, eats it for lunch, we'll see. All right, guys, it's time to get real. This is the iFlight 7 Pro V2 6S HD with the O3 on board, and you also notice that there is no GoPro mount on the front. This is the first time in FPV history that I have a 7 inch with no GoPro mount on the front. Why? Because, well, I'm recording 4K stabilized video right there. Who cares about the GoPro mount anymore? Because for me, if you look back at my reviews 10 years ago, even you'll see me flying analog FPV and recording just DVR, uh, because I wanna know a true characteristic, flight characteristic of a quad by removing an action camera. Um, I want to I want to fly it to fly it. I'm one of those guys. Uh, I'm not out making cinema videos. If you're making cinema videos, you know, by all means, put that GoPro back on there and make sure you're running that Hero 11 on there, um, and, and you'll get the best video. But you can also use gyro flow with the O3 as well now, so you're going to get super stabilized videos, even with Rocksteady 2.0 on the DJI transmitter. So one of the, let's just hop into the million reasons why I like this one better than all the rest of the Bonafly 7-inch out there right now. Um, number one reason is the, well, God, there's so many number one reasons. Um, the, first of all, this one has a dead cat design. And secondly, it can run seven and a half inch props on here. Right now I have the um, HQ. These are the um, seven threes, um, seven by threes. So I'll try to, I'll try to find a link for some seven by threes. They also have side skirts in here. If you go down for one of those hardcore seven inch crash, if you ever crash a seven inch and you walked up on it after you crashed miles out, you pr pretty much know you're probably unless it's an act of god you're walking up to uh, a broken arm or something because of the weight of these quads 
but it's nice they have side skirts down the side. Uh, I'm not a big fan of LEDs on long range drones because I don't want to attract a bunch of Karen attention. Um, so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll turn off the LEDs on an aircraft like this. It also has two extra tall antennas in the back, uh, probably the longest antennas of any of the seven inch binoflies flies out there. They also have um, an M8 GPS back here, which is not the greatest GPS in the world, but I get a decent lock out of it and it's, it's held up for me so far. So uh, make sure you also set the, the throttle fallback, uh, channel fallback on that as well to make sure you don't drop out of the air when you do go into fail safe and bench test it and do your field test um, more than uh, 150 meters out. You wanna be beyond 300 feet when you go into return home because guess what happens inside the 300 foot radius? Yeah, these guys fail safe to the ground inside the 300 foot radius. Outside the 300 foot radius, um, stage two kicks in and then you come back home for a GPS return. And now Betaflight has a land option, which is super cool. Um, they also have some decent motors on here. I, I recommended that when they were making this quad that please, please, please make them under 1300 kV. And these Zing version two series motors are 2809, 1250 kV. So they gave me what I really wanted, a low kV. And that's what you want when you're buying a seven inch, um, even for your FPV wings, you'll notice that some of them are super low KV. And that's because we're not looking for big power. We're looking for a low throttle cruise. And when you're flying long range, the holy grail of long range is to find the lowest amount of throttle that you can put into the quad and keep the nose up and in your heading. Um, when you find that on your throttle stick, that's the spot you wanna be to get the longest flight time. Um, super, super nice way to, to get the longest battery flight time. Now they also have a much larger battery on the iFlight website right now. It's like a 6S 8000 pack. And a lot of guys have been messaging me lately, Justin, should I get the 8000 pack for the Chimera 7? Eh, unless someone's tested that and it's light enough, I would avoid the 8000 pack. I think that's gonna be too heavy and too large for this particular aircraft. I think that the 8000 pack guys is for the Cine lifters. Um, so the Cine lifters are much larger, they have bigger motors, they have a bigger airframe. Um, so stick to something like a full sin 6S, 4000 milliamp pack. Uh, you can also get the LiPo version, which is a 3300. Uh, that one's gonna be compatible with it. Um, and it looks like iFlight on their website, they suggest getting the, the 8000 pack. Uh, but I, I don't know, man, I, I think that battery looks gigantic. Uh, let me know if somebody uh, has tested that 8000 pack. Um, I, I might not order one of those unless maybe, maybe they'll send us one. We could test it out on the channel, but I, I don't see why they have that on the page. Um, if it does work, I'd be impressed. Now it's also 695 grams. It is, um, quite big and quite heavy. It is over that 250 gram, uh, weight category. It also has, um, extended arms in the back. So it gets these back motors further out. And what that does is it helps with the vibration. So you get way less vibration to the camera, having these motors further away from where your FPV camera is. Uh, I also like the fact that you guys have to see this have a built in extra heat sink down here. So, you know, I talked about the O3 when it came out, we said, Oh my God, this thing will overheat and shut down by summertime. So we're going to, we're going to see how these O3 units really test out once it starts to get hot. I may end up having to take these side panels off uh, because they do have it covered up here, which is nice for a crash, but it may hold more heat in there. And that may be why they put this extra uh, aluminum heat sink below this unit. But I think that was super smart. And I mentioned to Gep RC too, that when they release the crocodile, they better have a custom made CNC milled aluminum heat sink for the O3. I think that's like very, very important for running any type of long range flight. Um, but there is no uh, venting in the bottom. I, I wish there was more venting in the bottom down here, but it seems that they kind of uh, sawed into the, or they, they CNC'd into this carbon fiber, but they left a small thin plate down there. And that might be to keep dust and things away from your O3 air unit. On the back back here, I have my Immortal T for my Crossfire um, Nano RX, but I don't have the Crossfire Diversity on here. If you can get a Diversity, TBS Diversity one with the two antennas on there, that's the one I would recommend for that. But as far as flight characteristics, let's jump right into the flight characteristics on the Chimera 7 V2. This quad flies like a giant glider, um, especially without the GoPro. 
take the GoPro off of it and test it without the GoPro. I swear to God, this thing flies and feels like an airplane in the air. Um, it is the smoothest flying quad that I own and it's the funnest to fly because it feels like the most reliable out there. Um, it's not zippy and fast and it doesn't do real quick yaw snaps and freestyle. Most people don't fly <laughs> freestyle seven inch, uh, but you could if you wanted to use a lipon, not a lipo, not a lion. Um, combine both of those words into to one single word there, but we're, we're, we're talking about long range and this one has the best tune on there out of any of them. And we will also add our own tune on the dronecamps.com website for my articles. So I'm going to write an article about this one. I'm going to include some more information on the Chimera 7 V2. And I, I will absolutely release a PID tune for this one for the community. So stay tuned for that, guys. And I will uh, make sure that yours is dialed in. That's, that's what I'm here for. But let's go ahead and give some final thoughts uh, on the 7 inch. And let me show you my number four pick, which will be honorable mention out of uh, these three, top three for 2023. All right, guys, there it is. The Fox Air Aura wins honorable mention because this one, it, you know, it didn't do me wrong. It, it, it didn't make me super excited. It seems to be a straightforward, straight up, um, sort of a pushed forward dead cat version of a seven inch with GPS on board. It has an O3 option available. You can also, I think you can get a, a walk snail or HD zero on there as well. And you can do an analog version starting around $400, um, 419. It's actually a little bit ex more expensive than uh, the other guys on the block, but this one will also run a Lion pack. You can do 6S, you can do a 4S 5000 on there. It has a decent, uh, actually longer extended bed than something like the, the Cola 7 or even the Recon, which has sort of the shortest bed out of any of them. And the longest bed and the biggest wingspan out of anybody is the Chimera 7. Um, so out of all of these that I've tested so far, absolutely hands down, the Chimera is just kicking total ass out there um, out of all of these seven inch quads that we have. But uh, I think that the, the Foxier offering, the RS7 is, is quite a bit smaller looking and feeling. It has, this, has, has props that come pretty close to the frame uh, in the front and the back here. Not, not super close, but it feels like it has a much smaller wingspan than something like Chimera. The Chimera is huge. If you're going to travel with this one, um, get ready to maybe just take the arms off this thing uh, or break it down a little bit so that they can fold in. You're going to have to take a, a wrench to do that. But uh, as far as travel, this one's not great. Um, this one's great for travel if you want something that's going to fold down. The Cola 7 is the choice. If you want... Um, Something that's going to be in between uh, price as far as the Cola 7 and the Fox Deer, uh, you can get the Recon 7 as well. So there's just so many choices out there right now for 7 inch. And I, and I love that we have choices for 7 inch right now because with the way the economy is, with the way that the FPV community is, there's not a ton of releases like we had like two to three years ago. So when companies release something now, I feel like they're putting more engineering time and, and, and more uh, close attention to details because when they release something now, they know that people aren't buying two and three and four and five quads anymore, that they're buying one or two um, and, and trying to make that quad last. Um, so you, you can get parts for all of these currently, which is also great. You have support from the company. Fox Ear is gonna support you. Axis Flying is gonna be around for a while. They lasted through the pandemic and are still here producing quads. So I think there's a, quite a bit, a lot of uh, money behind the Axis Flying company, as well as iFlight. I don't feel like iFlight is going anywhere anytime soon. They're one of the top FPV bind and fly companies in the world um, outside something like DJI and Gap RC. Um, next in, in line would be Recon FPV, which is also known as HGLRC. And it seems that HGLRC is not quite around anymore, but uh, Recon FPV seems to have taken over. So maybe HGLRC is just kind of moving on with a new name, which is cool with me. And I love the Dave C FPV designs that they bring to the, the table. Um, but the choice for me right now, guys, it's easy peasy. It's the, the Chimera 7 V2 with the O3 on board. If you can swing it, get the O3 version. 
you will be so freaking happy with this quad. Um, and, and I hooked my buddy Diego up with um, a seven inch a while back. And I actually gave him a crocodile um, maybe a couple years ago now. And uh, um, you got to get into seven inch. It's just way too much fun. So uh, I want all my, bud my buddies and my bros out flying seven inch with me. If I went on a trip, this is the one I would take. I would take a seven inch all day uh, over even a, a six inch or definitely over a five inch. So um, it's it's my choice outside of like FPV planes. Uh, those are my, uh, this is my first love when it comes to quads. As you guys know on the channel, uh, I'm all about the seven inch, but guys take care. I appreciate you. Please join the community some way, somehow on the channel and please do subscribe. I'll bring you more fresh content and up-to-date stuff for FPV drones coming up on the channel. I'll see you on the next one.